This is a story of plants duking it out. We'll start here in southwestern Australia, where you can find a kind of algae called Caulerpa racemosa variety cylindrosia. It also goes by the easier to pronounce name, sea grapes, because of the rounded side shoots that dot the little branches. Cylindrosia evolved here, and it's part of a web of creatures that compete but coexist. It gets eaten by urchins and fish. It fights other species of algae for light and turf. Sometimes it wins, and sometimes it loses. All these species and many others keep each other in check. Now, Cylindrosia isn't like pond algae. It doesn't grow on the water's surface. Instead, it anchors itself to the sea bottom and to rocks. But Cylindrosia didn't stay put in Australia. Back in the early 90s, it showed up in the Mediterranean Sea off Libya. What exactly happened, nobody knows. But chances are, says Juan Manuel Ruiz Fernandez, a biologist with the Spanish Institute of Oceanography, it hitched a ride on a ship traveling from Australia to the Mediterranean in the ballast waters. The theory is that a ship took on seawater in Australia and sucked in some Cylindrosia by accident. The algae went along for the ride as the vessel crossed the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea and passed through the Suez Canal. Once the ship got to the Mediterranean, somewhere close to Libya, it discharged that water, and the cylindrosia just slipped out into the med. Now, it's important to know what things looked like in the Mediterranean before cylindrosia got here, so let's rewind our timeline a bit to before 1990. The native algae in the Mediterranean Sea are brown, and red algae. In addition, there are these lush meadows of Posidonia, a green seagrass that rings the Mediterranean. Posidonia roots itself in the sea bottom and grows only where light can penetrate, within 150 feet of shore. It's abundant stuff. Ruiz Fernandez went scuba diving and made this map of where it grows along the southeastern stretch of the Spanish coast. He enjoys seeing Posidonia up close. It's really nice. You can see the seagrass move from one side to other, following the movement of the waves. It's a feeling of peace. Luis Fernandez talks about Posidonia like a kind of underwater forest. It provides shelter for countless fish and invertebrates. It helps prevent erosion and keep the water clear, and it stores carbon. The seagrass leaves even change their colors depending on the season. Okay, so that's the picture of the Mediterranean before 1990. Thick meadows of Posidonia, carpets of mostly red and brown algae. It's what things looked like when Cylindrosia, the green algae from Australia, showed up on the scene in the early 90s. And it wasn't long before Cylindrosia was on the move again, this time within the Mediterranean, which turned out to be a perfect new home for the algae. The temperature, the sunlight, the water, everything was just right for Cylindrosia. The algae have filaments that grow very fast. And as the filaments were slowly creeping along the seabed and over rocks, Cylindrosia was also casting spores out into the water. These spores can be transported by the currents to other places. The spores probably went no farther than 10 miles before settling on the seafloor. But boat anchors and fishing nets inadvertently drag Cylindrosia from one Mediterranean port to the next, to the next and so on. And gradually, day by day, Cylindrosia fanned out, coating vast stretches of the med. I'll stop talking for a second, but keep your eye on the timeline in the upper left and watch the spread of the sea grapes. This algae has become one of the most aggressive invaders this part of the world has ever seen. In less than 10 years, Cylindrosia was flourishing off the coasts of 10 countries besides Libya. Albania, Croatia, Cyprus, France, Greece, and Italy, Malta, in Spain, Tunisia, and Turkey. Not to mention all the big islands. In the Balearic Island, in Corsica, in Crete, in Sardinia, and Sicily. The reason for Cylindrosia's conquest is that usually when it comes up against one of the native brown or red algaes, it wins. Cylindrosia just grows faster, so it's not even a contest. And this is the problem. The invasive algae, almost in every place. Cylindrosia has settled much of the rocky terrain, but there is one place where it can't seem to get a grip. 
the seagrass meadows. The Posidonia seagrass meadows, which continue to thrive in the shallow sandy waters along the Mediterranean coast. The hypothesis is that inside seagrass meadows, the algae don't have enough light to grow and survive. Luis Fernandez compares it to the Amazon tropical rainforest. Lots of leafy trees in the canopy block most of the light from reaching the forest floor, which means new plants have a hard time getting started. Same thing goes for the Posidonia meadows in the Mediterranean. They're thick and lush and might prevent Cylindrasia from getting enough light. So it sounds like this invasive algae, it's changing things. I mean, it's not causing an entire crash of the Mediterranean ecosystem. We don't really know if this will be a good or bad. This may be a new Mediterranean landscape with which we must live. It'll take time to know whether the changes will be subtle or severe, and it's this uncertainty that's fueling Ruiz Fernandez. He set up a network of stations off the Spanish coast to monitor the presence and growth of Cylindrasia. His ultimate goal is to find a way to contain it. If we can protect the Syrah's meadows in the Mediterranean, we can control the spread of the invasive algae in every place. For now, there's no real winner in this struggle between these plants, and Ruiz Fernandez is working to make sure there aren't any big losers either. The seafloor isn't something most of us get to experience every day, but its daily rhythms and balance are critical to the health of life both below and above the surface. Mm-hmm.